Hi guys. I should be on the redesign by Prima, redesigning the Prima page, the group. Hopefully I'm in the right spot because I am not seeing anything on my camera that tells me and I'm not seeing comments. So if you're there, let me know you're there. Let me know where you're from and um, I'll tell you what I'm doing here. Hopefully I'm on the right page. Today I'm going to work on this coffee table. Oh good. Hey Shannon. Thanks for joining me. Um, this is just an old oak coffee table that I'm redoing. The bottom I'm going to do after I do the top because I want to do the top and see what kind of look I'm going to get. These are actually not on here yet. I've just laid them out to get, kind of get an idea. So I think I'm going to put these transfers on after we finish the stenciling. So I'm going to take these off and let you guys see what I've done so far. And I went ahead and did some of the stenciling already so you didn't have to sit and watch me do all of this. So I've got a little spot here left, and um, as I do that, I will explain to you what I'm doing. If you can see on the camera, this side of the stenciling is a little bit darker, and then I've faded it, and then I'm going to do this part in the same stencil um, a little bit lighter, because my vision is to take the flowers from the transfers and just kind of use them on this half, and I want to to blend it better and not have this such a dark background. So the stencil that I've used for this, um, I wanted to bring you guys in a little closer, but I'm afraid to move the camera. Who knows what might happen. But if you can see this stencil, it's got some, between the squares, there's like little wording. It's really not, I don't think it's any real word, but anyway. This is a stencil from Thinabare. It's called Mind Games. And you can see between the squares, there's like little letters that um, I think I just wanted to use it because I thought it was really cool. And when you're dealing with this small of a stencil and this big of an area, it, it takes a little bit more work, but it's just as easy. So I'll get started here and show you guys how I've done it so far. And what I do, you're going to need masking tape. And if you can see the bottom of the stencil here, it says Finnebear on it. And if you don't mask that off or anything else, um, I always get my brush in there. And I don't want that to say Finnebear on my table. So first thing I'm going to do is mask off the word Finnebear. And then I'm also going to put it up here at the hangy tab, and there's a little square down here that I don't want. I think that's to maybe match up the pattern at some point, um, if you use it over and over like I'm doing, but I haven't been matching it up with that pattern. The other thing I've done, since the stencil is so close to the edge here, and with my brush, I go over the edge when I stencil. Hey, hey, hi, Emily. Um, I have taken just some paper to tape to the edges here to try to keep my um, to try to keep my brush from going over the edge. So if you just tape it right along, make sure you don't tape your stencil pattern. But you just want to tape it to this extra sheet. And I'm going to do that on each side. I really wouldn't need to, because of the area I'm doing right here, um, I would need it on this side. But it's going to go, well, anyway. Let me just do it so I don't mess it up. So tell me where you guys are watching from. I know the time zone differences are kind of confusing because we, we have people in Europe and Africa and the UK and all over the world and then we all try to coordinate with our time zones. And don't do what I do, do as I say because I just took that the wrong thing. 
You don't want it over your stencil pattern. And as I do this, um, for those of you that are just joining me, let me explain a little bit about what I've done so far. I started this stencil and the vision I have in my mind, this is the background to the transfers I want to put on, and I've started a fading look. So when I do it over here and finish it off, I'm not going to do it as dark. And what I, I started out dark and then I actually went back and sanded it to try to fade it into this area. Um, because the, this is the area that I want to use the transfers on, in my mind anyway. Okay, you can either use a stencil adhesive, which I do have, but I didn't use. So I'm just going to go ahead and tape it to my surface. Um, and the way I line up, this stencil actually has the last row is not a full square on here. So I'm just going to pick the spot. Let me bring you guys in closer here. You see that okay? Okay. I am going to line the stencil up with the squares that are already on the table. And then I'm going to find the ones on the side and line them up. Knowing that these aren't full squares, I'm actually going to add a little bit more room. So when I do stencil that area, it fills it in a little bit more like a full square. But also the look I'm going for isn't a crisp, clean, happy look. <laughs> if that can be described that way. So I've got that taped down. My table's been dry for a couple of days. The base paint so we're good there um, before I ever stencil I top coat the base color for several different reasons um, it makes it so much easier to stencil for me and then when you lift up a stencil if you see you have extra paint under there uh, most chalk mineral paint is going to absorb that and you're, you're, you're out of luck but if you have a top coat under there, you can actually wipe it off and start over. And the secret to stenciling is getting just a tiny, tiny bit on your brush and offloading it. So all I'm going to do is take the lid, and I'm barely going to get any paint on there. And then I'm going to wipe it off even more. So there's barely any paint on there. There's nothing that's going to get underneath at this point. And then if you had um, adhesive under there, it would stick a lot better, but I'm going to hold it down as I do it. I'm actually going to start on one side and come in um, swirling like this. That way your paint is not going to get all globbed up in one area. And you can see that there's barely any paint on there. And I'm just going to keep that process and do it again as many times as I need, keeping it barely any paint. And you can just build it up. Always offload your brush onto another plate or a paper towel. And then come in moving. I know some people use the rollers. And those work great too. I just really prefer a brush. I feel like I have more control over it. And then once you get that base layer on there, you can decide if you want that darker. And if you do, just keep going. But just make sure your layers are really, really light each time, and that keeps the paint from getting up under the stencil. Um, this isn't really a stencil brush. This is one of my um, Klingon paint brushes, but it does work for a stencil pretty well. Um, I do have some small stencil brushes. I have a, a big brush from Redesign with Prima, 
that works really well for this. But I have, since I'm working with smaller squares, I wanted to stay with a bit of a smaller brush. And you want something that has stiffer bristles. You don't want something that has a lot of give to it. And the stencil I'm using, again, is from Finnebear. Redesign with Prima sells them. You can get them on their website. You can get them from a retailer. And the look I'm going for on this edge of the table is more of a faded out look. So when I get done here, I'm going to have to sand it even a little bit more. Okay, I'm happy with that many um, with that many layers, that shade, and at this point it's pretty much dry because the layers are so thin. So I'm just going to go ahead and lift it up. One thing I do is I always, before I lay it back down on the table, make sure that area is pretty dry, um, and then take a cloth, and I'm guilty of using my jeans for the most part, but if you wipe a little bit on the back of the stencil, that'll catch anything that has done any bleed through, so when you lay it back down, it's not going to get on your table. And then basically the same process here, I'm just going to line it back up with the squares that are already there, and I'm only going to go to this corner. I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to do with the edge and the legs of the table, but I wanted to do the top first and then decide. And if you were going for more of a, a clean, crisp stencil look, you would use the stencil adhesive because the way I'm doing it does lift up a little bit. I'm going to end up sanding it and fading it anyway. Okay, and then I'm just going to do this strip over here to the side, and then we'll be able to sand it back and start with some transfers. These stencils by um, Finnebear and the Redesign with Prima stencils are pretty thick. Um, they're really good quality. They're much thicker than what you find at like the big box hobby stores, craft stores. That makes them easier to use and easier to clean. I'm going to wipe off the back, just be sure none of it bleeds through the table. And we got one last area here. If you guys have any questions, post them up there. I'll try to, I, I'm seeing, I'm not seeing much going on. So if you have any questions, let me know. I hope I'm seeing comments, but I'm not sure. So my vision for this table is kind of a whimsical, but not a bright, colorful whimsical. I wanted the background to be more of a, I guess, a grungy look, a worn, grungy look. And then you can see here how I've gotten it down the edges of the table. And since I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do to the edge of the table yet, since I have top coated that, you can wipe it off with a little bit of water, and it'll just come right off. It's magic. Okay, we're going to put the paint away. I was using um, a black chalk synthesis paint. 
any of the brands will work, but I do like Weisau brand. Okay, again, that stencil was called Mind Games. And you can get it from Redesign with Prima. Um, it's by Finnebear line. Now at this point, that's pretty dry. It's already dry because it's um, such a thin coat. I'm going to go ahead and I'm able to sand it back. Since I've already sanded the area here, I want to continue that look and fade it off even more. So the sanding pad I have here, um, they're probably a 220, probably close to a 220. If you start to sand and notice it's just smearing, you're going to have to wait a few minutes for it to dry, depending on how thick you put it on. But most of this area is going to be covered up by transfers anyway. So I'm not real picky. I just don't want it to be really dark and show through that way. to give the background some interest. Okay, so we start dark here and we fade to the edge. And now let me tell you about the transfers that I'm looking at. This is the one I'm going to use. It's called Lush Floral. Lush Floral 2. It's got purples and magentas. And what I've done, I've gone through and I've cut out the ones that I was thinking about using. And I'm really liking this purple one with the black, the black and white background. So I've kind of just, I had them placed on here earlier to kind of get an idea of what they would look like. I'm thinking something like this with a couple of the leaves. What do you guys think? And then after that, I had some other ideas we might get into, but um, for now, I'm thinking we'll get these transfers on. And then I, if we have time, I wanted to show you guys how to use the adhesive transfers. I know I was confused when I first bought these. I've seen some confusion out there. Thank you, Beth. Um, this is an adhesive transfer, and it's called Papillon. Um, the difference in transfers and adhesive transfers, you will find, when you open it, it's yellow, for one thing, it's like a, but that's not the transfer. You're going to actually use it as an adhesive to put a color on, and hoping I can get to this today. Um, I was thinking it would be fun to do on the table too. So I think we're going to start with the biggest one in the black in the back here and work our way down and just kind of layer them what looks good. Um, and I'm thinking maybe a couple of leaves here and there, but maybe leaving some of the flowers a little open so we can see the pattern through. So what do you guys think? That's the plan. So I'm going to start with the purple one. And if you have never transferred before, when you take them out of the tube, they're just rolled up. You'll unroll them. It comes with a stick, um, the transfer burnishing stick. Thank you, Shannon. And then this is actually one from Redesign with Prima that um, you can buy on their website or from a retailer that's also a burnishing stick. So I'm going to go ahead and get these out of the way, and we're going to start with the purple and the leaves, I think just kind of off center here. I think um I think I'm liking the leaves just kind of coming out together on one side. So I think I'm gonna start with them and then we'll put the flower over that. So when you take off the backing, just 
be sure that you don't touch the transfer until it's in a spot where you want it. And I think right there is going to work. So I'm just going to smooth that out. And I'm going to go ahead and do the next. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and burnish that really quick before I put the next leaf on. I need to move the camera up here. Can you guys see this okay, or do I need to turn the overhead light on? I've got natural light coming in on like three sides, but I'm not sure the light is coming in over the table okay. Just let me know. Hey, Vilman, how are you? Thanks for joining me. My first live here on Redesign with Prima Page. You can see fine. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you for being my my buddy today. Okay, thanks, Emily. Emily, how are you? How's your new shop? I need to get up there and check it out. You're not too far. Be sure you burnish around all the edges. Thank you, Billman. When you peel it up, you're going to need to go back over it with your finger or a, maybe a microfiber cloth. Make sure you've got all those edges burnished down and there's no nowhere it's lifting, no bubbles are showing. Now we're getting to the fun part. This big purple flower. Doing good so far. Cool. I love this big purple flower, and I think it's going to look great right about here. So I'm just going to start with one edge, smooth it out to the side, and then you want to spend enough time burnishing to make sure every edge, every part of it is on there well, good. Trying to read Emily's comment. I can't read it all, but I will look back. After I do the top of the table, that's going to help me determine what I want to do to the bottom of it. I went ahead and just painted the base coat, everything in an off-white. It's actually called cashmere. So it's not a true white, because I didn't want to do a bright, bright table. I'm doing more of a subdued, grungy look here, except for these flowers. And we might, I might decide when they're finished to go to um, age them a little bit, but I'm not sure. I kind of like the contrast. So I'm just going to slowly peel up. And as you do it, just watch and make sure nothing's coming with it. If you see the transfer is coming up with the paper, just go right back over that spot again and then try it again. Sometimes you have to really work certain areas, but you you want to be patient, don't get in a hurry. If you're in a hurry, something always happens, for me anyway. I'll mess something up when I'm in a hurry. And then just go back over it. Finish it well into the table, get all the edges, 
I am loving this purple flower here on the check background. Okay, now the next one I think we're going to do, I was kind of going in the order of size. So I think the red and the gray and then another red and a purple. But I kind of want to leave a little bit of space to check the background to show through. So I'm thinking maybe something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the red one or the magenta next. Trying to remember as I pick it up and peel off the paper where I wanted to put it. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks, Diane. So what's everybody doing on their Sunday afternoon besides hanging out with me here? Thank you for joining me. We have some warm weather here in central Illinois today. I think it's almost 60. When I get done here, I'm planning on going for a jog. A very slow jog, but I'm going to try it. I know Shannon is in Canada, so I'm sure it's a lot chillier up there. But maybe you guys got above freezing today? So I'm just working it out the edges, making sure. Ooh. Okay. Pick a spot to start peeling it back, and I need to work on that a little bit more right here. Cleaning and organizing the garage more. Oh, oh, you spray now, Emily? When did you get a sprayer? I didn't know you were doing that. I'm scared of a sprayer. Actually, I don't have the area for one. Do you do that in your garage? Or do you have a place at your shop? You must do it in your garage. We actually have a car in our garage. Actually, I think we have two right now. That won't last long. When the spring, when the spring hits, I kind of fill our garage with furniture that I pick up. Okay, so burnish all the bubbles out. If you have like a clean cloth or I use my sleeve sometimes. I don't like the oils from my hands to get on there. In the garage. Do you have like a, a spray booth that you set up? You have all the equipment and everything like that keeps the spray off the walls and the big mask that you wear. Seven degrees Celsius in Alberta. Okay, Shannon, how much is that in Fahrenheit? Is that like 12? <laughs> is it 30? Are you above freezing? Yeah, you're above freezing because Celsius freezing is zero, right? Okay. So that's warm. It's above freezing. Okay, the next flower, I'm thinking this gray one, I love how it's got a purple center, and you can't see that, can you? Let me come back down here. 
six degrees Celsius in Ontario. Uh-oh, my camera went off, sorry, hang on. You guys see that okay? My camera keeps blinking at me, telling me that I can't turn my phone, but I haven't turned my phone. Maybe that'll help. Okay. Alright. You guys, tell me, are you seeing a problem with my camera? Video feed hasn't had any issues? Okay, then I'll just keep going, because my camera keeps telling me I'm having issues. If I, if I disappear, let me know, because I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. Back to work. Um, I think the gray one should go next. I'm going to do a little, divide the colors up a little bit. I'm not exactly sure what I was going to do with this one. Maybe we'll put it over here. I don't know. So let's work on the gray one next. This gray one is really pretty. It's got a center of purple, which really pulls out the purple in this big one. in Canada, I guess you probably still have all your snow. How much snow have you had? We've had a ton of snow this winter, but we, it did all melt recently this week. It got up to, well, today I think is like 58 Fahrenheit. So our snow is finally gone, but we did go up to um, northern Indiana last weekend, and there was still a ton of snow up there up by Chicago area. My husband likes to run 5K and 10K races. And sometimes they're like two and three hours away. And I go along if I can because I hit up thrift stores and antique shops that I've never been to. Another reason I like to top coat uh, the base color is because when you're doing a transfer like this and you get really close to the edge, it's really easy to gouge your paint or scratch it up when you're this close to the edge. If you've cut your transfer as close as I have, you don't always have to do cut them like this, but if you do, be careful those edges. Okay, let's see if we got this one. Yep, I need to work on that edge a little bit, so you just drop it back down. And work that area some more. Make sure you lift it slowly as you go. Actually, I'm not taking the time that I normally do with these because I don't want to make you guys make this go two hours. But you might take a little bit more time than I actually am. Go back over to any of these spots that haven't burnished. I'm 
trying to read the comments. In Sweden, we have plus two, blue sky and sunny. Is that what it, I, I don't, I can't read it all. Yeah, two does that mean two degrees? Do you do Fahrenheit or are you on Celsius too in Sweden? Wow, I bet it's beautiful in Sweden. I've never been there. Hey, Terry, thanks for joining me. Okay, gotta go. <laughs> Have fun with your work. Two degrees. Oh, yeah, it's just, it's only like two degrees Fahrenheit in Sweden right now. Are you up in the mountains? We were that cold a couple weeks ago. We had a big cold snap this winter. Cold for a long time. Okay. I still see a few tiny bubbles when I look at it in a in the light. So I'm going to work those a little bit more. Hey Charlie, thank you. I'm really loving this bright colors on this faded black and white background. Okay, so I think the next one we want to do is maybe this one. Um, maybe we'll bring, I was thinking the purple here. What do you guys think? I think it needs some more leaves though, and I'm not sure that's the leaf I want. Well, we'll do that one later. I think this one will be next. We'll do the little gap so you can see the table through it. And then if you guys have some ideas for me, shoot them my way for the base of this table. I haven't quite decided. Right now it's just painted the off-white. But I'm thinking it needs to be either black, maybe this deep purple color, maybe both. And then I have to be careful on these areas that are close to the other transfer. I don't want to scratch it up. You guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. Sunday afternoons are kind of iffy catching people, but I guess it's not afternoon for everybody, especially Sweden. How, what time is it in Sweden right now? Are you like up in the middle of the night just to watch my live? <laughs> yeah, just kidding. I have been wanting to use this transfer forever. Um, this is the Lush Floral 2, and I'm sure you can still get it, 2238. So, um, is that like 7.30 at night? PM? that would be p.m., right? 22, I don't do good with military time. It would be like 10, 10.30. So it's like 10.30 p.m. there. Oh, thank you, Shannon. It's 11.38 there. 
Soon time to sleep, yeah. You're up late. Watching from British Columbia, Canada. I have a lot of Canadians. Shannon, did you get all your friends to come on? Thank you. We have, if I'm not running over time, um, I want to show you how to use the adhesive transfer when, when I'm finished here with the flowers. But if I run out of time, maybe I can do my next live on the adhesive transfers or something. Okay, what do you guys think? Do I need this purple flower too? Just keep going. Thank you. Hello from Holland. Wow. You guys are from all over the world. I'm smack dab in the center of Illinois in the U.S. Okay, what do you think? Should I add the, f the purple one? Maybe have it go down the edge of the table? Or should I cut it off? What do you think? I'm thinking I like the purple one on there, but I'm wondering if that's going to be too much. Um, keep going. Oh, okay, I'm at 41 minutes. Those green leaves really make it pop. Okay, I should probably add some more green leaves. I'm not sure that's the kind of leaf I want there. What do you think? Should I put the, a leaf coming out of... Should I add it like that or take out the leaf and just do the purple? What do you think? Maybe I need a different type of leaf to put over there. I do have some other ones. I have another, another one like this. Take out the leaf. Okay, Shannon, you think I should use this one? This leaf over here? Or forget the leaf, just the flower. Okay. Thank you, Fran. Thanks for your help. I'm going to cut out the small leaf. Okay, what do you think right here? Give that a shot. So I thought it probably needed some more green over here. When I get the table finished, I will post it on this page in my own page, half past four design. So go ahead and shoot me any ideas you have for what you think the base should look like. Should I keep it simple and just paint it black? Or should I add a few more colors, some blacks, some purples? I'll show you 
before I sign off here, remind me what the base actually looks like. Because I guess you probably can't see and don't know. Okay, last flower, I think. We'll do this purple one. I really hate to cover this part up. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the little tips are done in purple that match the center. So I didn't want to cover it up, but oh well. I've already put the leaf over there. I'm just trying to figure out how I could do that without covering it up. But there it goes. It's stuck. It's going to stay. Like I'm probably the only one that's going to see those tips of those leaves that are purple anyway. Nobody's going to notice that, are they? And now I've got to decide if I'm going to take it over this edge. Oh, Emily, yeah, go live with spraying. I want to see that. That's a great idea. Invite me when you do that. I've seen people post about it in pictures, but I've not seen anybody do it with a video. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and take this over the edge. Um, so all I'm going to do is kind of push on the edge where I want it to stick first. And then take it down as I go. And if I end up not liking how it's over the edge, I can paint over that or take it off at some point. But even if it would like crackle a little bit, I'm okay with that because this look I'm going for isn't the, um, um, what words am I looking for? It's not the shiny, classy, looking for something a little more grungy, something that's been used, not pristine and perfect, because I can't do that very well. Oh, you did a short one the other day? Is it on your page? I'm going to have to look it up. get this burnished on really well and if you guys want to hang out for a, a little bit longer I can show you how to use the adhesive transfer um, because what I'm thinking is a butterfly what do you think about a butterfly in metallic I have decor foil Redesign with Prima Decor Foil. One is Relic Copper, and one is Boudoir Rose. Can you, let me see, can you see that color? That's a really shiny, coppery gold, goldish copper. And this one is almost a, um, a rose gold. So what do you think? Should we do a shiny butterfly or two in one of those colors. I was thinking one or two butterflies. Do you think we should do two? We could do one in each color. Gold? Okay. Okay, so we need our adhesive transfer. Here it is again in the tube. When you see them for sale, you're going to notice they say adhesive transfer. And um, on the, 
on the cover, it's actually the gold part, and you're going to be confused if you don't know what you're doing, and you're going to think it should come out gold, like I did. But no, you actually have to put the gold on there. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's start with this big butterfly. Um, it's actually got a few flowers around it. I'm going to go ahead and leave those flowers just because we've got flowers on here and it'll go, go with it. And I'm thinking just right here and maybe, maybe doing the other one going this way. This is the hardest part for me, placement. I don't like things like perfectly aligned, but I don't want it to look wacky either. Both colors, Charlie? Okay. We'll do both. So we'll start the big one with the relic copper. Okay, let's see. I think I'm going to put it right there. No rhyme or reason, I just like it there. And they come off like any other transfer. And you're going to do it the same way, you're just going to burnish it on there. The difference is, when you remove your sheet, you're going to be like, why is that a sticky yellow? Well, it's a sticky yellow because it's actually adhesive. And I've only done this one other time, so hopefully I remember what I did. And I, it's really not that hard, I don't think. I'll prove myself wrong. I'll get that on there won't be able to do it right, but hey, give it a shot. Okay. You guys see that okay? So I'm going to lift this off. We now have sticky yellow butterfly. I'm going to take a sheet of the decor foil. Yahoo, I want to order that copper one. <laughs> Uh, they're just called Decor Foil. Relic Copper is the name of this one. Look at that. Woo! There's several sheets in there. I'm just going to take one of the sheets. And if I remember correctly, I am going to cover the design and I'm going to lay the white side down not the copper side. And it doesn't quite cover the whole thing, so what I'm going to have to go, I'm going to have to go back over this. I'm going to cut off a little piece here. Now you just smooth that copper right over the top of the adhesive. I'm going to add this to the bottom. And as you rub it, you can see where the adhesive is staying to the glue. Can you guys see that okay? I need a camera person, but I have a tripod. So you're just going to burnish it into that adhesive down below, and you can see as it sticks. It's taking, it's taking the copper off. And then I can actually see a couple of spots that it didn't stick to, so I'm going to put this down and go over it one more time to make sure I get that adhesive. I 
Okay. I'll bring you in closer when I get this lifted up so you can see what it's done. Be sure you go to all the edges and all the grooves so you get that paper in there really well. And it's really like another transfer. If you pick it up and see that something didn't stick to an area, you, you can lay it back down, pick a spot that the copper is still on, like this little sheet that I have here. I see just tiny, tiny places that you can go back over. As you do, yeah. Ooh, and look at that. I hope you guys can see that on the camera. There's a couple more spots I need to go over. But that looks really cool. When you're doing stencils with that white plaster stuff, can that foil go on that white plaster stuff? Um, it has to be sticky. You need some kind of adhesive. So if you're doing a transfer or um, a stencil with white plaster, um, I don't think it'll stick to the plaster. You don't want to do it while it's wet. Gosh. You know what? You could probably, after the white plaster stuff dries, you could probably spray it with like... Um, an adhesive spray or even paint some adhesive on there for this to stick to. Okay, so I'm just going back and filling in any little tiny spots that I didn't quite take enough of it, but this is looking really cool. I love it. So that's how you do an adhesive transfer. You don't have to use these foils. You can also use like mica powder, glitter, almost anything. Um, if you look on Redesign, um, their webpage, there's examples. They have a blog that shows you different things, different products that will stick to these. In fact, I think the tube says... Um, runs through most stamps, stencils, rubbing plates. So there's a lot of a lot of different uses for these. But let me bring you in to see that close up. And my camera says it just went off. So anyway, I hope you guys can see that. That turned out really cool. Let me turn the overhead light on. Maybe that will catch it. Does that help at all? Okay, I think my time is up. Thank you for joining me today, guys. It was fun. I'll do it again. I think I'm scheduled to do it next weekend or the weekend after. I'll have to check the schedule. And the copper turned out really pretty. I think I'm going to go ahead and continue the butterfly and then use the rose gold. And then if you guys have ideas for the rest of the table, let me know. Here's a look at, it's got a, a little apron here and kind of the fat legs. So if you have any ideas, let me know. But I'm going to continue working on this. And I, when it's finished, I will post it here in the Redesign with Prima page and on my own half past four page on Facebook. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Thank you, Charlie. Emily, I'm going to go look for your video. Catch you guys later. Bye.